Now to the latest in the investigation on whether Rudy Giuliani violated foreign lobbying laws. NBC News has obtained the names of some of the associates listed in the warrants with whom Giuliani may have been in contact about former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Yovanovitch. They include Lev Parnas, former Ukrainian prosecutor Viktor Shokin, and frequent Fox News guests, attorneys Joe DeGeneva and Victoria Tunsing. This according to sources familiar with the investigation. Tunsing was also served with a search warrant last week related to the investigation. The Wall Street Journal reported on Friday that the warrants to seize Giuliani's electronic devices sought communications with anyone who may have worked with the former attorney to President Trump on the push to have Yovanovitch ousted from her position or on pressuring Ukrainian authorities to investigate the Biden family's activities in the country ahead of the 2020 election. As the journal reports, quote, Mr. Giuliani's efforts in Ukraine were at the center of Mr. Trump's first impeachment on charges he abused his power by seeking Ukraine's help in his 2020 election bid. Giuliani attorney Robert Costello told NBC News his client did not do any lobbying of foreign officials. He called the search warrants, quote, legal thuggery and said he'd spoken with law professor Alan Dershowitz about constitutional issues related to the searches. Giuliani has not been charged with any offenses. Let's bring in Justice Department reporter for The New York Times, Katie Benner. She's an MSNBC contributor, also with us. State attorney for Palm Beach County, Dave Ehrenberg. The AP's Jonathan Lemire and Princeton professor Eddie Claude Jr. are still with us as well. Dave, I'll start with you and just... From the face of it, from what we know, does Giuliani have any reason to worry? Yeah, good morning and happy belated birthday, Mika. Thank I, you. He, to you, too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. May the fourth be with you is mine. Star Wars Day. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, he does have a lot to worry about. The last time that the feds raided a Trump personal lawyer's home and ended in a 36-month prison sentence, and Giuliani does not want to be Michael Cohen 2.0. Uh, FARA, the Foreign Agents Registration Act, is a real existential threat to Rudy's future freedom. Uh, prosecutors love this law because it's relatively low-hanging fruit. You just, it's pretty cut and dry. You just have to show that he didn't file the paperwork. It's not like a bribery case where you got to get into his mind and talk about the interpretation of his words. Uh, and although it's relatively easy for prosecutors, the penalties are pretty stiff. You can get up to five years in federal prison. And the reason why the penalties are tough is because FARA is important. You know, you want to prevent foreign influence in our laws, in our public opinion. And Paul Manafort pled guilty to FARA. He got prison time until Donald Trump pardoned him. But uh, there is no Donald Trump around as president to save Rudy Giuliani here. So what you have now in Rudy is a guy who's desperate, who's erratic, and whose defense is based on his alleged belief that he was working on behalf of the former guy. But the former guy is saying, no, uh, he was working on his own. And if that conflict between Trump and Giuliani continues to grow, I could see how Rudy would flip on Donald Trump and turn state's witness. So I bet right now Donald Trump wishes he had given Rudy a pardon when he had the chance. Katie Benner, uh, we have Jonathan Lemire with us, who has a question for you. Jonathan. Hey, Katie. Uh, great work uh, following this story. Could you just give us sort of big picture, just what the situation is with Giuliani right now in terms of the various threads that investigators are pursuing? We know this has been an investigation that's gone for quite some time. Uh, you know, dating back years with his relations with some in the Ukraine uh, in efforts to, among other things, try to damage the candidacy of Joe Biden. You know, what sort of jeopardy could he face that we don't know about yet? And to Dave's point, is there a suggestion, and there always seems to be when someone like this gets jammed up, that he himself could eventually turn a state's witness and perhaps be helpful in other cases? I don't want to get inside a room. Rudy Giuliani's head or try to go there. But I think that what we do know is that for your, to your point, two years, the FBI has been looking into Rudy Giuliani's contacts with various people in Ukraine. And what they've been trying to figure out is what he, whether or not the actions he was taking, whether that was trying to um, organize a smear campaign against Joe Biden, his son, his son Hunter Biden, 
whether he's trying to oust an ambassador to the Ukraine who was known for her very anti-corruption stance, whether he was doing that on behalf of people in Ukraine, which would run him afoul of foreign lobbying laws, or whether he was doing it to his, you know, to what he says, which was on behalf of former President Donald Trump. What is interesting here is no matter what the FBI finds, whether or not the Justice Department prosecutes him, Rudy Giuliani himself has collapsed the interests of Donald Trump and foreign powers and shown that the former president had foreign powers at heart and in his mind and to the, and was a, pri were a priority, excuse me, before the interests of the American people. Uh, we have Eddie Gloud with us who has a question for you, Katie. Eddie. Uh, Joe, let me just say this. I'm so excited to ask Katie Benner a question. I actually taught her at Bowdoin College when she was a young. So oh, this wow. is really surreal for me. That's true. Uh, so wow. this is really great. That's really weird. Uh, so, so Katie, I get to ask you a question, and you see, I'm smiling like a chess cat here. Should we read this as an indication of the Justice Department looking more deeply into? Uh, you know, the Trump administration? Should we think that something else might be coming down the pike, not just simply with regards to Giuliani, but with regards to the last four years more generally? And it's yeah, great so to see you, look, by the way. It is so great to see you, too. Absolutely. When we look back a few years ago at impeachment part one, remember there were two, of course, impeachment one, what we saw is we saw the Justice Department really try to separate itself from what was going on publicly. We had public trials before Congress. It really felt like a State Department issue. What we are seeing with the Giuliani case is that prosecutors and investigators inside of the department were still very curious about what was going on in Ukraine and how the president played into that. We also know, the New York Times has reported, I've reported, that people inside of the criminal division were worried after that phone call that there would have to be yet another investigation of the president. While the Justice Department said there was no campaign finance crime, there were prosecutors in the Public uh, Integrity Unit who saw it and they said there could still be a crime here. So yes, what we're seeing is the Justice Department continue to pursue the one thread that it seemed to be allowed to pursue in 2019 with an eye toward being very broad in scope. I would not say that this means there will be other open investigations. I would not say that this means there will even necessarily be indictments, only that we're seeing a department that's now fairly unfettered, where prosecutors feel they can do their jobs under a leadership that has said, so under Attorney General Merrick Garland and Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco, both of whom have said publicly that they trust career prosecutors and trust their judgment. All right. Thank you so much for being with us, Katie. We greatly appreciate it. I know uh, your, your, your former uh, instructor appreciates you <laughs> being here as well. <laughs> Professor Gloud, exactly. Thank you so much, Katie. We greatly appreciate it. Dave, so Dave, let me ask you a question that uh, it just, it, this keeps coming at us, okay? And you're an active prosecutor, so you can answer the question. It seemed during the Trump administration, we heard from the Trump Justice Department, uh, we heard that Don Jr., you know, leaks. Don Jr. was going to be arrested. We heard that, you know, uh, it, Jared Kushner was going to be arrested. I remember back in, during the George W. Bush administration, we would get calls every Friday afternoon. Don't be too far from the studio because Coral Rove's going to be indicted this Friday. Don't be too far from the studio. It happened like five, six, seven weeks in a row. Oh, it's this Friday that Coral Rove is going to get indicted. Coral Rove never got invited. Matt Gates, we've been hearing about this investigation now for a month and a half, maybe, and we keep hearing the same thing. They're trying to figure out whether he had sex with a 17-year-old girl. All right, well, they probably know by now, and yet... We keep hearing it. The leaks keep coming, and they keep coming in all these different directions. Now it's Rudy Giuliani, and the leaks are coming out on Rudy Giuliani, and now it's Victoria Tunzing, and now it's uh, Joe DeGeneva. Like, wh <laughs> Man, I don't know about you. Well, but you know, but if I'm running a law enforcement agency and my people keep leaking stuff like this, they're fired. Like, how long are we going to keep, like, la you know, putting people out there? By the way, I'll say this for Democrats as well, too. So don't, don't come after me on Twitter. And by the way, if you have your name out there 
for two, three, four months. Oh, he's going to jail. Oh, he's and then he doesn't go to jail. It's like that old Ray Donovan question. Where do I go to get my reputation back? But this this goes on all the time, Dave. And I'm trying to figure out why don't they just if they got a case. Then bring the charges Try the case. Why do they keep leaking to all of these news agencies? Oh, well, we may, we're investigating. Don't, don't tell us what you're investigating. Investigate it. Bring the charges or don't bring the charges. But this keeps going on. And again, please, I am the last to defend Rudy Giuliani on what he's done over the past four or five years politically. But what happens if they don't bring the charges against Rudy, this hangs over his head. What about everybody else? This hangs over their head. Carl Rove, it hung over his head for a couple of years. At what point do they stop leaking inside the FBI and just do their damn job? And if you got something to charge somebody with charge, because we heard this over and over again, again, during the Trump administration, during the Trump Justice Department, uh, while they were in charge. At what point does this stop? At what point do they stop the leaks? At what point do they stop talking about the investigations that they're seeing whether so-and-so did this or so-and-so did that? It really is outrageous and it's un-American. Joe, I hear you. And the federal prosecutors do take longer than state and local prosecutors. And it's true that you just wish that they would just make the decision and not have this hanging over people's heads. But I think a lot of the leaks don't come from prosecutors. Like you brought the Matt Gates case. The recent revelation that there was a confession from Joel Greenberg, I think that probably came from Joel Greenberg's side. I think he wanted that out there to help pressure federal prosecutors to cut him a better deal. The May 15th deadline is approaching. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.